We've all become much more aware of the clinical trials process due to COVID-19 vaccine development. Working together, we've seen that pharmaceutical manufacturers were able to move incredibly quickly through the clinical trials to provide the world a much needed COVID-19 vaccine. But what if every clinical trial could run this quickly and effectively? I'm thrilled to be joined by David Volk from the Roche Group, the world's largest biotech company, and Michael Schmidt from Tenthman Management Consulting, focused on life sciences, who have been working closely with SAP over the past year to enable an industry-wide clinical trials network to make this possible. Welcome, David and Michael. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Now, before we jump into the solution and the work we're doing, let's first set the stage for people who aren't deep in life sciences on what's the challenge, what makes clinical trials difficult today. David, why don't we start with you? Sure, I'd be happy to. And I think we've all gotten some new awareness, as you've mentioned, over the last couple of years as we've followed the progress of vaccine development. But in general, uh, pharmaceutical developments, biotech developments um, can take up to 10 years or even longer sometimes to bring a product from initial ideation out to market. And that's, that's 10 years of testing in, in human studies and clinical trials from phase one to phase three. And then in terms of supply, uh, we're seeing globalization, we're seeing increased complexity around cold chain uh, materials. And especially as we look at these advanced medical products like biotech or personalized medicine, it's become increasingly complex over the years, which has added uh, time and cost and, and uncertainty throughout the entire supply chain. Now, Michael, you've certainly been invested in this process for a long time. From your perspective, what are the challenges you see today? We see a lot of challenges in the technology space. So most of the large pharma companies are using very scattered landscapes, systems that are not really interconnected. And that obviously puts a significant pressure on those companies in order to enforce external collaboration and improve also collaboration and networking. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Now, David, the Roche Group obviously is large and has lots of resources. You could have set out to try and solve this just yourself, but you didn't. So why is that? Uh, we're, we are large, and we, as you mentioned, we have a lot of resources, but we're only one part of the whole supply network. We have to work with many other companies. And the idea is, how do we connect with those, those other companies in the supply network seamlessly and efficiently? Uh, Michael, we've been working with you for a number of years. Maybe you'd like to share your perspective as well on this. Sure, so as David mentioned, technology has improved and there is a lot of new opportunity to improve the clinical supply process. So we jointly decided to form this consortium, which is now consisting of 20 plus of the largest pharma companies in the world who are all engaged, who are all very excited about what we are doing there. But most and foremost, this is deep industry transformation. This is not just surface level based process re-engineering. I love that. And now that we have this consortium in place and then coupled with the reality that based on COVID-19, the general consumer's expectations have certainly been raised of how quickly we can move around clinical trials. Kind of, what can we expect moving forward in this area? Yes, exactly. I think expectations have clearly been raised. There was a great example for us in Roche during the pandemic where we had a product that was in clinical trials uh, for COVID-19. And we were trying to get the product um, to an underserved population in New Orleans, at a clinic in New Orleans. And we were able to move the product from Germany uh, to the US through customs and out uh, onto the trucks to get it to the clinical site in two days. And that's a process that normally takes two months. So the question is, and the expectation now is, how do we do that on a consistent basis? And how do we avoid all the information flows, the manual human interventions, that allow us to seamlessly flow information and data across all of our partners. That's what our expectation is going forward. You know, as Christian said, we will all win as a community. And this is just a beautiful example of exactly that. So thank you both for being here and for sharing the story and for being such fantastic partners with us on this journey. Thank you for having us. Thank you.